Hey there, imagine this. You have a top secret code that opens a mysterious door in a cave. You're willing to sell the code to your friend Jerry. However, you want to prove to Jerry that you have the code without revealing it in any way. Well, wait a minute, is that even possible? Well, what if we told you that it is? Through a method used in cryptography known as zero knowledge proof. It is a way of doing authentication to prove that something is known without revealing directly the known information. All right, let's get into it. So this concept was developed by a group of mathematicians in the 1980s and has been used by various cryptocurrencies such as Zcash, which unlike public blockchains like Bitcoin, gives you the option of confidential transactions and financial privacy through shielded addresses. So that seems interesting, right? Well, then let's get back to our mysterious cave and see how this whole concept of zero knowledge works. All right, note that since you have the code and you're trying to prove that you do, you are known as the prover. Jerry, on the other hand, is trying to verify that you indeed have the code, and so he is known as the verifier. Now, things get interesting here because in the cave, you find that there are two different entrances with paths that are connected with a door. This provides the perfect environment for you to prove to Jerry that you have the code without revealing it to him. Jerry goes to the entrance of the cave but has to wait outside to give you instructions. Let's name the entrances A and B. You enter at random through one of the entrances while Jerry waits outside to tell you which path to exit through. If you really had the code, you would be able to exit through the path that Jerry wants every single time by using the door. But mathematically, you would have a 50% chance of picking the right entrance and path from the get-go. The best thing is to run the test again and again to reduce any chances of luck involved. Now, from this example, you're able to use the same proofs to verify that you have the code by opening the door and coming out through Jerry's requested path multiple times. In this sense, your proof system aims to achieve statistical soundness, completeness, and most importantly, zero knowledge. These are the three main criteria that a zero knowledge proof method must satisfy. So first, soundness. So soundness in that if the information provided by the prover is false, then a ZKP method must allow the verifier to refute that the prover is telling the truth. If Jerry asks you to come out through path B, but you came out through path A multiple times, or even just once, it could mean that you don't actually have the secret code to the door. Then the second criterion is statistical completeness, which implies that if the information provided by the prover is true, then a zero knowledge proof method must enable the verifier to verify that the prover is telling the truth. Simply put, everything that is true has proof. In our illustration, this would mean that as long as you come out through the path that Jerry indicates every time, then it's very highly likely that you have the code. Now, the third criterion to be met is zero knowledge, such that the method must reveal to the verifier nothing else than whether the prover is telling the truth or not. In our case, the only information revealed is that you were able to go through one entrance and leave from the other because you have the secret code. In no instance did you reveal to Jerry the secret code. By the way, the example that we've just covered is an interactive zero-knowledge proof method where the prover and the verifier interact several times until the verifier is convinced. The other type is known as a non-interactive zero-knowledge proof where proof can be delivered offline without direct communication to the verifier. Now, regardless of the method, zero knowledge proof in general has its advantages and its disadvantages. So advantages include simplicity, since it does not require complex encryption methods. ZKP also reinforces system security and privacy. 
The zero knowledge proof method strengthens the security of information by replacing ineffective authentication methods. Now, similarly, it increases the privacy of users by avoiding the reveal of personal information. Now that said, it also has its drawbacks, like the need for a large amount of computing power. In interactive ZKPs, where many interactions are needed between the prover and verifier, computationally intensive algorithms are used. The same goes for non-interactive ZKPs, which require advanced computational capabilities, making ZKPs unsuitable for slow devices. The other challenge is that ZKPs don't give a 100% guarantee that the prover's information is true, mathematically speaking. Now, in our example, we saw that as you continue to exit the cave as per the path requested by Jerry, the probability of you lying about knowing the secret code decreases with each iteration. However, it can never reach zero to give a 100% guarantee. So then what about its applications? ZKP has already been applied in many industries, including crypto. For instance, Zcash uses a type of zero-knowledge cryptographic method to introduce more privacy to its blockchain. Unlike public blockchains like Ethereum and Bitcoin, it provides complete privacy when it comes to transactions. Zero-knowledge proof is also applied in sectors such as finance. The ING Bank uses a type of ZKP that allows users to prove that they have a secret number that lies in a known range. For example, a mortgage applicant could prove that their salary sits within a certain range without revealing the exact figure. ZKP can also be applied in authentication, where users can be authenticated without exchanging secret information such as passwords. Overall, ZKP is a concept that points us in the right direction technology-wise, especially in this digital age where platforms collect our data and sell it for profit. So what do you think of Zero Knowledge Proof? Do you believe it will catch on going forward? Well, let us know in the comments. And of course, remember to like, subscribe, and follow us on all our socials for Future Alpha. See ya.